Good afternoon once again. Students, uh, today we're going to talk about adding fractions with unlike denominators. Adding fractions with unlike denominators. Now there are some basic fraction rules. Okay, there are some basic fraction rules. Let's go into it a little bit. A fraction states how many parts are in a whole, okay? The top number is the numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. This is just one half. Numerator, denominator. Okay. The numerator basically is how many parts of the whole, of how many parts of, I'm trying to think how to put it in plain English. Um, the numerator itself is how many parts out of, out of the denominator that you have in a fraction. So what it's really saying is one out of two. The whole, or the two, I'm sorry, makes up the whole while the one makes up part of the whole, okay? So again, that's one slice out of two pieces of pizza, okay? Basically, if you can remember that, you've already kind of won the battle. But again, the numerator is how many parts out of the, of the denominator that you have. So if you have two pieces or two large slices of pizza, again, you have two large pieces of the pizza and you eat one of those slices. You're basically having one out of the two. That's the basics of it. Now, if the numerator remains the same for all the fractions and the denominator gets larger, the actual value of the fraction itself gets smaller. This is because the fraction rule states that if the de denominator increases, then the whole is divided into more parts. So if you had, you know, something you like to eat, let's just say a cookie, your favorite cookie and you want to share it with your friend, would you want half of the cookie or would you want one-tenth of the cookie? Now, of course, if you say you want half of the cookie, you're gonna have a large piece. If you say you want one-tenth of the cookie, that means you have to cut that cookie up in 10 different parts, okay? So that's the start of the basics of uh, the fraction rule as we know it. Um, when you add or subtract fractions, the denominator should be both, or should be the same, I'm sorry, for both fractions in order to perform the operation. Now, you cannot add or subtract fractions that have different denominators, okay? Because they're different groups or different groupings. We're gonna get into that. I wanted to give you at least the gist if you can add, for instance, Uh, well, I'll use a different pen today. Hopefully, you can still see it. You can add one half plus one half because the denominators are alike, which will simply be two halves or one whole. Okay? Why? Because again, you do not change the denominators because it's the same thing. The numerator, you can add. So it just basically means it's a whole, all right? But if the denominators are different, there's something else you have to do, okay? So when you add or subtract, you can do that. You will not change, change the, the denominator as long as it's the same. But if it's not the same, then you must change it, okay? And there's a way to go about doing that. Let me stop for a second. 
that's the basics of uh, fractions. Um, you also want to remember that you're still working on what is, um, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you're still working or the denominator is still um, working with parts of the whole. The whole doesn't change, only the parts. The whole does not change, only the parts, okay? Remember that. So again, like if you had a whole pizza, the pizza you can cut into different parts, but the whole pizza is still there, okay? Um, if the, since the only the parts change, then if we said, I'm trying to give a fraction, um, two fourth added to one fourth would equal three fourths. Let me write that down. Two fourths plus one fourth would equal three fourths. Again, the only thing that changed was the parts, okay? The whole did not change, all right? Again, because those, the denominator is the same, does not change, still whole pizza, okay? But one person had two slices, another person had one slice, so now you have three slices that was eaten out of four. So there's one more slice left because that pizza might've been cut or it should have been cut in fourths in order to have four, okay? But again, if that denominator was different, now we're dealing with two different types of fractions and two different parts of group or types of grouping. We won't get into multiplying just yet. We're just gonna talk about adding and subtracting, okay? So now let's uh, go ahead and look at a couple of videos here on adding fractions that are not like, that, but don't have like denominators. So hold on one moment. I'm gonna share my screen. Sound goes. In this video, we're going to talk about how to add two fractions. So let's start with this example 2 over 3 plus 3 over 4. So, how can we add these two fractions? The first thing you could do is multiply the denominators of the fractions. 3 times 4 is 12. And then cross multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. And then multiply 3 times 3, and that will give you 9. And then you could add 8 and 9. 8 plus 9 is 17. So we get the answer 17 over 12. And so this is our answer as an improper fraction. Now, let's try another example. So let's add 5 over 3 plus 1 over 2. So let's follow the same technique. 3 times 2 is 6. And then cross multiply. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 1 is 3. And then we're going to add 10 plus 3. So 10 plus 3 is 13. So the answer is 13 over 6. By the way, if you want more videos on fractions, let's say how to subtract fractions, how to multiply or divide fractions, check out the description section of this video. I'm going to post some links there that you might find useful. But now let's get back to this uh, video. Let's work on another problem. So now it's your turn. Go ahead and add the following fractions. 2 over 5 plus 1 over 4. And also try this example. 3 over 7 plus 5 over 9. Fill All right, let's stop right there. And I'm going to let you try to go ahead and fill, well, try to do those particular problems. Let me pull it up one more time so you can see them.
we have. I said, let's just do the first one, which is two over five plus one over four. And I'll give you some time to do that. Two over five, one over four. Pause right there and come right back. Let's take a few minutes to do that. Two over five plus one over four. Come back. Hopefully you're gonna get the answers that I get and then we'll see what the gentleman came up with on his uh, answers, okay? Now, let's do the three over seven. Well, yes, let's do three over seven plus five over nine. That's what I wrote there first, even though that's not what he actually put down first. Okay. Again, seven times nine is 63. All right. If you cross multiply, nine and seven, now nine, nine times three is 27. And seven plus five is 35. 27 plus 35 is 62. So that would be 62 over 63 would be your final answer. Now, obviously, most of our fifth graders might not be able to add that up in their head. Some may not, some may be able to, some may not. So if they couldn't, you just would stack it, 35 over 27, to add it a little easier. 75 is 12, 3 and 1, carry 1, 3 and 1 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. All right. Now the next one. Two fifths plus one fourth. Five times four is twenty. Cross multiply four times two is eight. Plus five plus times one is five. That equals thirteen over twenty. That is our final answer.